Here is another Bigfoot sighting from out of the Clackamas River area. This took place February 21st, 2001, and it's the Ripple Brook Bigfoot sighting. Brody Lewis is bringing us the footage. Thank you, Brody Lewis. He now lives along the Oregon-Washington border, so you're going to be seeing a lot more Bigfoot expeditions from Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. One quarter mile east of the Ripple Brook Ranger Station on Forest Road 4631, the witness, Rick S., he wants to stay anonymous, was turning his truck around and looking out the back window. There were two students from the local Job Corps Center with him, and they had been painting on some Forest Service buildings near the helipad. The creature, a male, dark in color, total red, skinny and agile, five to six feet tall, was also very muscular, was seen running across the road north to south, jumping down from the slope onto a game trail and running very swiftly across, across the road with bent knees out of sight down hills towards Marshy Stallion Creek. It was very cloudy this day with no wind, but one ray of illuminating sunlight through the trees the creature actually had ran through it giving the witness what he says like a frame in the movie the creature was illuminated perfectly with the sun with the asphalt road to the background the creature was only 200 feet away and the sun was probably giving some type of a backlight situation it was 11:30 a.m. the elevation 1600 feet um, later um, when they when the witnesses and the students uh, got to where they could make a phone call, he called a friend that he knew uh, was uh, into investigating uh, Bigfoot sightings. The guy's name was Jerry, and he come in with a friend uh, that he calls Trapper Steve. The witness uh, said to them, uh, him and both the students had an overwhelming feeling of warning to get out of the area that they were being watched after he had seen the creature. The two students had not seen the creature, but they had the same filling, and uh, they uh, immediately left the area. Um, upon uh, investigation, they did a size comparison. Trapper Steve, who is six feet tall, uh, in boots, and very stocky, he stood where the creature was. The witness said that the creature was at least two feet taller uh, than Steve, and uh, was a lot more muscular. A lot more uh, stocky built, and and Steve uh, was a good candidate. He's a, a very large, muscular man. Um, the creature was in its classic arm forward, backward running pose when it ran across the road. Said the hair hung down under the extended arm, four to six inches, and the hair was uh, reddish brown. The creature was very hairy and covered in very long hair, including the head, and uh, said it wasn't fur; it was hair. It also made a point with the raised foot and uh, the pad of the foot aimed towards him as he, it was running away and he says it was padded like a dog's. He said the head also come to a crest or a peak. He did not see the face because of the creature's uh, uh, travel, direction of travel and he said the creature was muscular and fast. Um, Trapper Steve actually uh, located uh, footprints that looked uh, like they were uh, at least uh, 15 inches in length, I believe. And uh, he uh, followed them down an, uh, an elk or a deer trail. And this, I believe, was a couple of days after the sighting. He also found a place where it looks like the creature uh, bedded down or hid behind a rotted stump. Perhaps a place where it had hid uh, from these guys after... Uh, it ran off down these, this game trail. Well, we're going to bring you some more Bigfoot sightings. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching. Two weeks later, a couple may have had a Bigfoot encounter in the Clackamas River area. It was March 2nd in the afternoon. They both want to remain anonymous, so we'll call them Jim H. and his girlfriend Gay. They hiked up a removed road. This road had been uh, closed and then removed, but they hiked it up to Fish Creek about two and a half miles. They backpack camped 
and the second night is when they had activity. They were up there for two nights. On Saturday night, Jim heard what was light sustained movement in the brush around camp, just after dark and before bed. Just before dawn, he was awakened by a strong, skunky smell. After sunrise, he checked the area and found two fresh footprints in the duff about 50 feet from camp. He says they were very clear, close together, and about 15 inches long. Jim feels confident that his camp was visited by a Bigfoot. He says he tends to be very skeptical on the side when it comes to finding Bigfoot tracks, but because he knows they were the only one there and hearing the activity and smelling the odor at night, he really thinks they were visited by uh, Bigfoot. Um, a gentleman named Cliff, he come and investigated the area because of the sightings and this couple's uh, um, ordeal. And uh, up at Frog Lake, just north of Ripple Brook, he glassed uh, across the ravine through the trees with uh, 19 times binoculars what he thinks may have been a Bigfoot or possibly a bear walking on hind legs just out of semi-hibernation. I don't know, maybe bears walk on hind legs when they come out of hibernation. This could explain a lot of Bigfoot sightings. Now, um, he thinks he, it, it was probably a bear that he saw uh, across the way. It was good weather that day, and it was going down through a lower pass. So, great area for Bigfoot sightings. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on bringing you more Bigfoot sighting reports.